Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafting Ink Spot. Yeah, it's been a while. This new uh, heart failure thing has really taken me for a loop, but I got some time in the craft room today, so I wanted to um, share a card with you and a quick technique on coloring it. And it is this beautiful background stamp called Berry Harvest. You know, in the beginning, I used to be very intimidated by big, big background stamps. I love to color, so I assume my next time I do this stamp, I'm going to be using some uh, alcohol markers on it, get some real detail and color. Um, but for today, I'm going to show you how you can take this background stamp, make it beautiful and colorful really quickly and easily. So let's jump in. What you need is a piece of your watercolor paper. Now I already went ahead and stamped this. Use a, a waterproof ink. Use either archival or stays on or something. And make sure that it's very dry because it's got to be able to hold up to quite a bit of water. Um, to stamp this on the watercolor paper because it's so textured, I would suggest using your stamp positioning tool. And what I do is I put a little bit of uh, erasable uh, tape on the back of mine, hold it into my stamp positioner, and I can stamp multiple times and it won't move. So now I have my little watercolor cutting board here. I am going to add a little bit more of this removable tape to the back so that I can um, adhere it to my board and it's not going to move around. So it's going to stay there. All right, so the first thing we want to do is I have a bottle, a uh, jar of water here and some paint brushes. You can use anything you have. And if you have an aqua painter or paint brushes, they will work. Then I put on a little plastic uh, painting palette I have, I put some drops of reinker for the granny apple and the berry burst. Those are the only two colors that you'll need. So what we want to start off doing is I'm going to take a spritzer and I'm going to lightly spritz my, my paper and get it nice and wet. I'm going to, I have one large brush here. This is a, what is this? I'm going to say this is a six. And I'm just going to smooth that water out. Okay. I'm going to put and water down our berry. It's nice and wet. And then where the berries are, I'm just going to drop in some color. You don't have to be precise. We're just trying to get some of the color in the background in there. Make that one a little dark, but that's okay. We'll just pick it up and move it to some of the other little berries. Just a whole batch of berries there. Okay, now we're going to rinse our brush out. I am going to pick up a little of this real concentrated here and maybe move it around a little bit. Rinse our brush. Now we're going to bring in the green. And we're going to go in between the spots on the leaves. Now you don't want to get into that paint too much because it will, since green and uh, kind of green and reds are complementary colors, it will um, 
cause it to be muddy. So all I'm doing is dabbing right around those areas and getting my green paint in there. I'm using a, a fairly nice wet brush so that the ink can just dab in there. deep there and if you get a little too much just take your take and dab off your brush on the paper towel and then just pick it up it'll make it a, a what they call a thirsty brush there we go we have our basic panel how cool is that right you can try to hit a couple of those white spots if you want, but it's not really necessary because we're going to go back in and do just a little bit of detail work. So I'm going to run this over to my heat tool, which I forgot to bring over here, and I'm going to heat set this to dry it. takes maybe a minute to dry it. You just want to make sure that ink is dry. And now I'm going to bring in a smaller brush. This one is an 8. Let's see, make sure I'm in the camera here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little for you. Okay, so now I'm going to take my small brush and I'm going to pick up, we're going to go ahead and start with the green because it takes the longest. And now what I want to do is I just want to add some detail to these leaves. So usually closest to the flower is going to be the darkest. I'm going to blend it out a little. Sometimes if you just put some water on the leaf and then just take a drop, it'll blend for you. Okay? We're just trying to intensify the color on these leaves a little bit. Go dark and blend it out. up some color and drop it in there and let it let it do its own bleeding thing. You don't have to be super neat. All you're trying to do is bring out the intensity of some of those leaves. And the coolest thing about doing that first kind of colorful wash is that you have really nice colors in the background behind the berries and the leaves. You got to remember, uh, watercolor dries quite a bit lighter once it dries. So don't be afraid to be you know, a little bit bold with your color.
I'll go ahead and speed up the rest of these leaves and I'll be back when it's time for the berries. Okay, there we go. We've got the leaves all kind of, a little bit of texture in them by adding, uh, you know, a little bit of two-tone to them. Okay, now let's do the berries. Now these are super simple. So I'm going to rinse out your brush, pick up, um, pick up some of your berry ink, and with the tip of your brush, just do, pick up some more, just do little dots on those berries. And the, the ink will spread on its own. And like I said, it dries a little lighter. So I'm just adding some random dots. It'll give you your dark and light contrast to give you dimension. You know, this is really kind of fun and relaxing. You know, I've not felt good for several weeks and I knew I wanted to stamp, but I know that between stamping and coloring, uh, it's very uh, relaxing for me. So, uh, why not pull out this new background stamp and do a little bit of both? Couple more berries there. You're going to be amazed when this dries, it's going to look beautiful. All right, I think we about have it. I'm going to go hit this with the heat tool. Okay. 
then, this is what we got. I got a couple little puddle spots. All I'm going to do is just dab those with a paper towel. And look at this beautifully colorful background. So now for a little extra accent, I'm going to grab my metallic watercolors and my paper pumpkin stamping block. My little brush, make sure it's rinsed real well. And I'm going to use my uh, gold metallic. Make sure I'm using the right one, yeah. I want it really fluid. It's kind of funny because I have a plain paint splatter tool that I got years ago. I'm not sure where it is, but what I want to do is I want to put this gold on the side of my block here. I'm going to put the ink on there. Get some more gold. Oh, let me zoom out. You probably can't even see what I'm doing here. Sorry about that. Okay, where are we here? Let's zoom back out. So I'm picking up some gold out of my palette. And I'm putting it on my stamping block. Just kind of scraping it onto the edge there. And I want it really fluid. Let me get a little more pigment in here. onto my card. I saw somebody do this and it's such a nice random dots and easy to control where it goes. You obviously don't need to do this um, step but it adds some nice shimmer to your card. Alrighty then. Let me see if I can get this to show up. Um, when that gold dries, it'll have gold shimmer dots all across it. And basically, that is it. That is how I did that quick, easy watercolor background. Um, since I had the beautiful gold, see how the gold shows up once it dries? Then I used actually some rose gold foil to mat it. I figured the pink and the gold kind of comes up to rose gold. I used the new, um, wanted to stay die set. I used the feel better soon. And I did a white matte and the feel better soon and the rose gold. The other card I did with this stamp, which will be on the blog post. All I did is watercolor the leaves without doing the very first step of the random drops, which leaves it just kind of white in the back. I used the rose gold for the background on the greeting and the berry burst for the greeting. This one to me, I, I kind of think might be a little hard to read. Maybe it's because I have, you know, something pink close to a pink rose foil. It's still beautiful, but it's a fun stamp. Go play with it. My next 
time I use it, I'll be coloring the flowers with my alcohol markers because you know how I like to color. So that is it. All the supplies I use today are on the blog post below. And I hope you have a very happy Stampin' Day. Thank you to all of, for all the wonderful letters, notes, and cards I've been receiving. I don't have any updates for you. I, they're just trying to get the heart failure itself under control before they can decide how they want to move forward. Um, I remain hopeful and I enjoy being in my craft room when I can. And I'll bring you projects and cards as I can. Thank you. Have a very, very happy Stampin' Day.